Well, hello there. Hey there, YouTube. This is SJM4306. Back with a kind of random review. It's This is something that I normally... Well, I haven't reviewed before, per se. Sorry, I had to run and grab this. Yeah, in a past video, I made of this uh, Moonlight Night Vision uh, monocular, I guess you'd call it. And this is mainly for, like, hunting or, you know, just doing, like, outdoorsy kind of stuff uh, in the middle of the night or if it's too dark. And this guy actually has, like, an analog high-voltage night vision tube. And these are freaking awesome. So I did a repair video on this basically i bought this as broken and then it worked <laughs> so there really wasn't a repair it was going to originally be but yeah i've always had a fascination with night vision equipment and this is one of these ir um, powered ones so this uses like a, a gen 1 russian tube and it has an ir led and that's what it uses to spot illuminate it and so very similar in scope to that but more modern clearly is this uh, pair of digital night vision binoculars they say binocular but it's really actually a monocular still there's only one video uh, camera and there's a single display but anyway um i was very kindly sent this in for a review and this is the new and improved model and yeah you can see here it is model number apl nv 008 and the kind of benefit of using digital versus analog on this guy, uh, you have to be really careful. If I were to turn this on with with the lens exposed in full brightness, you could actually burn the tube out quite easily, in fact. So, however, for, for uh, digital night vision tech, you really don't have that issue because they're just using standard uh, CCDs. Uh, for the sensing element and they they just they don't burn out they're they're made to operate uh, the only thing that they end up doing and hopefully we can get this apart to look inside is uh, they do have a, a movable it's electronically controlled a, a IR cut filter that goes in front of the CCD element uh, when you're doing in daytime mode so that you can see and then in nighttime mode it removes that and then it turns and it allows you to turn on the uh, IR LEDs uh, to illuminate using that way anyway this guy has uh, it says high definition digital display uh, we'll check that out 800 meters detection range so yeah uh, this guy much like the um, the moonlight model I have uh, has a, uh, a zoom lens on it I forget exactly what this is uh, just from use I think this is like four times zoom or something like that so you're not going to be walking around with these unless if you like stubbing your toes because it'll be far too zoomed in for you to actually see what you're doing and like accurately you know safely walk around with them so this is for more like surveillance sort of stuff and yeah obviously if you're going to get a pair of these and use them for that kind of thing please make sure you use them legally <laughs> uh no surveilling people and whatnot anyway yeah it says it does uh four megapixel pictures 1080p uh video and there is a, a micro SD card slot so that you can record to an SD card and then upload it to a computer later. So yeah, you can see they have uh, some examples if you wanted to look at cats in the dark for some odd reason. <laughs> yeah, and I forgot to mention the company is called Apexel. Not Apexel, Apexel. And it says expand your vision. Expand it by watching things in the dark apparently. And yeah, just highlighting the day and night modes. And here is a bunch of the specifications. I shall zoom in here. And if you want to read all this, uh, take a, a moment to pause the video and go through it. But yeah, in a nutshell, important things, a 2.2 watt IR LED. This is 850, 840 or 850 nanometers, I believe. So it is actually visible to the human eye. Very faintly, you'll see like a faint gl red glow. So this isn't, like I said, made for like stealth missions or anything like that like if if you're trying to follow someone in the dark like they'll definitely see a glowing red dot following them <laughs> so yeah um this actually probably would not be that difficult to take out the leds and replace them with 940 nanometers which is invisible to the human eye uh, though i believe the ccd is maybe a little bit more sensitive to the 850 nanometer variant and that's why they end up using those 
It says battery life with IR off is 10 hours. So clearly you're going to be using night vision goggles with them on. So you expect the, uh, the battery life with the LEDs on full blast to be significantly less than that. And it says less than or equal to 32 gig micro SD, which is good because all I can find are 32 gig cards. So yeah, it has lithium uh, battery internally. However, there's a caveat. Uh, it doesn't come with the batteries, so you need to supply them yourself. And I'll show you in a sec their standard 18650s. And yeah, uh, yeah, it says 850 nanometers, 300 millimeter uh, range. Uh, display res is 640 by 480, not so HD, actually. Uh, so it's pretty low res screen, but it is pretty sharp. So I'll show you in a second what the footage look like. And it's actually not CCD, it's uh, CMOS, sorry about that, the uh, sensor type. And CMOS is sensitive to IR, so that makes perfect sense. And yeah, uh, four times optical zoom, so that's right on. Digital zoom, if you want to use it, is 12 times on top of that. I wouldn't suggest it, it just makes the image look worse. Uh, F2.2 aperture, uh, it has an anti-reflective coating on the lens. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah. <laughs> uh it says it can focus down to one meter that's interesting and then all the way to infinity and yeah does ntsc pal etc etc it has the different video formats it does do up to 1080p but only 20 uh frames per second so that's sort of meh i know yeah let's just pop it open i will warn you guys i have opened this i, I couldn't contain my my excitement so unfortunately i already did open this and use it and so yeah, it does come with a very nice uh, carrying case. And your obligatory uh, lens wipe and your manual, which, there we go, there's the English side. Very nice infographics explaining how to use it and what all the parts are, et cetera, et cetera. And a bag of do not eat. <laughs> so yeah, here's the uh, case itself. It has this nice uh, like shoulder strap and this is adjustable. You just you know tighten or loosen this end. And the bag itself has a very convenient little mesh pocket for your uh, USB cable. And it does come with a cable. And we're going to check the length right now. So this will charge, or it'll actually run off of the USB if your batteries are depleted. Uh, this is about two feet, so decent decent length on the USB cable. Then we just slide this out. There's nothing else inside, just a black void. It is uh, lined with felt completely on the inside, so it's not going to scratch anything. And we have the unit itself here. This very strongly reminds me of like the uh, the binocular scanners that they use on Hoth in Star Wars. Except for those were white, I believe. White and gray or something, and these are clearly black. But yeah, build quality is like absolutely solid. Like plastic itself there's a little bit of creaking but uh like the plastic's like nice strong abs the design has like textured grips built uh like designed into the plastic itself so it holds very very nicely and there's sort of an ergonomic curve to the to the uh handle parts there so yeah it feels good in the hands the buttons are all like rubberized and they're very clicky, so there's plenty of tactile feedback. And you're going to need that when you're operating this in the dark because, well, it's going to be dark. And over here we have, I'll just take off the protection film. This is the IR LED, and it looks like it's adjustable. That's just patterning, so that does not spin. Uh, it's just like a fixed IR LED in there. Here we have like a lens cap, but it does have a small hole in it so that it doesn't uh, wash out the sensor if you have it in the night vision mode. Uh, however, if you're using this um, during the day, you can just take that off, that's not an issue. And if you have the IR LEDs, you don't need this cap on. It's just sort of there to protect the lens, but you can still see through it. Uh, but I believe it does cut down on some of the light. So you generally wanna take this protective cap off while you're using it. And there we have the lens. You can see kind of the anti-reflective coating and yeah, the thing rotates uh, quite a bit to uh, adjust the zoom here. Let's see if I go all the way in. One, two, about two and a half turns. 
the full range. So yeah, has quite a bit of adjustability. I'll stick that back on. Very nice like uh, metallic logo thing on top there. We have like a, a guard for the uh, eyepiece. And you can kind of see there. <laughs> that's uh, the viewing window and there is a protective film on that. We can just pull this off. And that's another cool thing. Pull this off, wash it. Because <laughs> this is going to get sweaty, especially if you're outdoors and uh, whatnot. Yeah, there's a protective film on here. Give me one sec. I'll pull that off. Okay. Yeah, there's a little tab. And there we go. Beauty. So, yeah, there's a the little window there. And uh, some screws. Ooh, do I want to open this right now? No, I'll hold off. Give me a sec. Anyway, yeah, on the bottom, there is like a quarter inch tripod mount. So, you can mount these on tripods. Fantastic. Little rubber feeties so that when you set it down on a table, it doesn't skid around. And our two battery doors, which the tabs are a little bit recessed, so you might have to use like a quarter or something to, to open them. But they're not going to pop open on their own. And like I said, this does not come with batteries, which, uh, by the way, I forgot to mention pricing. Uh, last I checked, this was about $180, but I, I think that was on sale. The regular price is about $200, so not cheap. Uh, but at the same point in time, generally for like hunting gear, like night vision hunting gear, I don't think there really is a cheap way around that unless if you go the really, really low end, which you're going to get horrible, um, horrible price to performance ratio out of. So yeah, not cheap. These are 18650 batteries. Now these cells I pulled from an old laptop battery. So they don't have protection and they don't have the nubbins, but it does fit. I did have to pull out one of the springs a little bit with a, uh, a little pair of uh, pliers. But once I did, it does make contact and it does work. Uh, but I would highly suggest don't go the route that I did. Buy actual protected 18650 cells. Uh, I'm going to assume that the charger inside here, because you can charge the batteries off of USB, I'm going to assume that it does have protection. Uh, but... Because these cells don't have under voltage protection, this could actually drain the batteries completely, which would kill these batteries if I weren't careful. But yeah, I would suggest just getting protected uh, cells and then you won't have to worry about over or under charging or anything like that. Anyway, this is good enough to test on. So this is what I'll use right now until I can uh, dig up a pair of actual protected cells. Yeah. And let's... Uh, See, there's actually two eyelets, so if you want to put like a uh, like a lanyard. There you go, that's a word. If you wanted to put a lanyard on it, you could just strap it through these holes. And so you can hang it around your neck while you're not using it. This is actually pretty heavy with the batteries in it. Uh, probably a couple pounds, I don't know, like two or three pounds. But yeah, uh, so on the button side, we have plus, minus, and these double as like track forward, or yeah, track forward, track backwards. If you're um, playing back a video, you can fast forward and rewind. There is like a menu button, an OK button, an IR button, and then the power button. And the power button doubles as uh, changing between the photo, video, and like media playback modes. And those are the three modes it has. So if I fire this up right now, you can see it says welcome. And it, it is actually interesting. It looks like you're like watching like a little tiny movie theater or something. Because it literally is, I'm guessing, like a two-inch LCD that's set somewhere back here. And then it uses a lens to, uh, to get the focal length correct so that you can actually focus on it. And it actually looks pretty sharp. Like I said, the resolution is only 640 by 480 of that LCD inside. The CCD resolution is much higher. It can actually do 1080p, but the internal LCD is not, not so great. So, uh, But it, it's good enough to see what you're going to film. And then once you get the footage off, it's going to be high resolution, the footage itself anyway. So yeah, here you can see uh, at the bottom, if I zoom in, there we go. Yeah, you can see it says shoot. If I click OK, that'll record. If I'm in picture mode, it'll take a picture. If I'm in record mode, it'll start and stop recording. Holy. Okay, yeah. Uh, sorry about that. Camera's having a hard time focusing. The upper uh, corner, it'll show you what mode you're in, as well as what your um, like resolution, selected resolution is. There's a zoom slider on here, and this is for the digital zoom. So there's uh, one... 
to three different levels of digital zoom. And they said that's up to 12 times. You have a battery icon in this corner here. And it just shows you, like, not the percentage, but it'll, it'll show you a bar that changes according to kind of the analog battery, remaining battery life. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, focusing otherwise is all manual, so you're going to have to do that. It does tell you up in the top, top there uh, how many remaining, like, minutes or photos you can take with the current memory card. And by the way, I actually forgot to show you guys. You can open this flap, which is more or less sealed. It's probably water resistant, but probably not waterproof. I would not dunk this in water, but if it's raining, it's probably going to be fine. But yeah, there's the micro SD card slot and the USB-C, which huge, huge kudos on going USB-C for charging there. And the rubber bung just kind of fits, fits inside. And yeah, so yeah, that's uh, generally it. Now... Like I said, if you hit the power button, so we're in photo mode, I hit it once, now we're in video mode, and you can see I have full HD selected. Hit it again, and now we are looking at uh, if there were any files stored on the card that I pre-recorded, you would see them here and you could play them back. Hit power again, and it goes back into photo mode. If I press and hold power, it will uh, shut off. And there you go. Uh, so what I'm gonna actually end up doing is uh, recording some footage, and I'll show you the the live footage from the card. I'm not gonna screen, like film through the screen because that's gonna be kind of difficult. Oh yeah, one thing I forgot to mention. So just turn this on real quick, welcome. If I totally cover this cap, if you were to zoom in, I don't know if you could see, it looks like uh, maybe there are some either stuck pixels or dead pixels. I don't know if they're on the CCD or the the LCD itself, the uh, display inside here. So I'm gonna actually take a picture of it pitch black and then open it up in like an image editor on my laptop. And if those pixels are still there, then that means they're actually on the CCD. If not, then it means it's actually the LCD. There are some stuck pixels. So yeah, um, that's sort of a bit, mm, not too happy about that. But uh, if it's on the LCD, that's preferable because at least then your pictures will come out clean. Or it could be something weird going on with like Gaussian noise or something within the uh, CMOS sensor. I keep saying CCD, it's CMOS. Anyway, yeah, let me get like a, a couple of uh, night shots and day shots, uh, both for the photos and the videos. And we'll do a little bit of a montage and then we'll come back and uh, go through uh, what I think of this. Okay, so as you might notice, I have this on a tripod because I'm filming like all the way down there and it four times zoomed, so of course it's like super zoomed in. But to get like clear and steady pictures, especially pictures, videos is not as sensitive, but to get pictures, you need to hold this like perfectly still. Trying to do it by hand, you might have seen one of the shots I took was blurry. Put it on the tripod, it was so much clearer instantly. Okay, so I played around with this guy for 
about a week, a little more than a week actually, since I received this. And generally how I feel about it, obviously I'm not probably the core audience for this. I, I don't really hunt or do much outside. <laughs> that sounds really sad, but it's true. Uh, so I'm probably not the core audience for this, but uh, for my usage, it works as advertised. I mean, <laughs> I can't fault it for that. Uh, it Like the night vision capability is pretty clear. Uh, it's just a matter of the resolution isn't as high as I would have liked, but that may or may not really matter. Um, generally, if you're going to be spotting, you know, animals in the dark, uh, it doesn't, you don't necessarily need to see like the individual fibers of their fur. <laughs> Uh, it's good enough to have enough resolution just to spot them, and I'm pretty sure it'll definitely do at least that much. Uh, the LED, like the IR LED on board, uh, seems plenty bright enough. I've, um, I've, I've tried it like through a window, and on the lower modes, I was able to see through the window. Uh, but when I turned it up, uh, it kind of reflected off the window and blinded, blinded the sensor. So I'm pretty sure the the IR LED is going to be plenty powerful enough, and even. Um, in like moderately dark areas but still had a tiny little bit of, of light uh, you could even turn off the IR and just rely on the sensitivity of the CMOS sensor uh, in low light conditions and that seemed to work pretty well actually uh, even in in areas where my eyes had trouble seeing I would turn this on with the IR off and it was able to resolve you know significantly more detail than my own eyes so it uh, seemed to do pretty well in conditions like that. The LCD seems to kind of be the letdown. Uh, it's pretty low resolution, uh, not so great. It seems to have maybe some dead pixels, it looked like. I took some photos of uh, just pitch darkness, and uh, the dots that I was seeing on the screen, I, I couldn't see them in the image, so then that means that the CMOS sensor is okay, and the, it's the LCD itself that has some some uh, stuck or dead pixels. So that maybe is a, uh, a QA thing that maybe they need to uh, get a better quality um, LCD panel inside. It doesn't really affect usability except for when you're taking like really dark pictures then you notice it. Uh, but during regular usage when you either have uh, daylight or IR on, uh, you really aren't gonna notice it. Um, just the periodic random uh, stuck pixel or whatever. Uh, isn't really going to pop out at you. Uh, you can definitely still resolve plenty enough detail to see what's in front of you. Uh, as for pricing, if I'm being honest, it seems for like a, a 200 ish dollar device. Now, I, I mentioned that this was about $80 when I uh, had first uh, started making this video, but the retail price it said was 200 So for a device that costs that much with built, uh, with like that uses rechargeable batteries, I would have expected them to include the batteries because not everyone is going to have uh, 18650 batteries. They're not, you know, that widespread and standard enough that people just have them in a drawer somewhere. So in addition to the, the price of this, people need to shout probably about like another $20 for like a decent pair of 18650 batteries that aren't like utter cheap garbage. So it would have been nice to see if they included that uh, at the price point. Uh, because it does seem like uh, this is kind of going towards like pricing it towards being a serious tool, in which case it really should include those. Now I did see, um, I don't know if it was an older product or if it's uh, if it's another model in this range, but I did see that they had a model that used uh, AA batteries, I believe it was, and. Honestly, if you're taking this out hunting and you're in either very hot or very cold conditions, lithium batteries are probably not a great idea. I think that the, they got it right with the AA batteries uh, in that other model that I, I saw some videos for. So yeah, I, I like the idea of having rechargeable batteries, but I just fear that in the, in the kind of situations that you'd be using this guy, uh, they would tend to fail a lot easier and be you know, harder to replace than just going with AA batteries. Uh, now, obvious, uh, the downside of going with AA's over these 18650's, uh, there'll be probably, you, you would need quite a number of them because these two batteries are in series. So this runs uh, internally at like around 7.2 volts. So you're gonna need at least like, what, five, six AA batteries in order to like get the same voltage out of them, unless if you, Unless if they went with like a boost converter and then just sucked more current from the batteries, draining them faster, 
they would probably have opted to go with um, more uh, series AA cells in order to get better battery life. But yeah, I, I think that in a situation where you're taking this outside and you know, extreme temperatures and whatnot, that uh, AA's would fare better, better than 18650s, but that's just my opinion. Anyway, uh, usability had absolutely no issues. It, it works great. It, it powers on fairly quickly. Uh, the IR works really good. I'm able to see like decent, uh, decent resolution, at least from the panel. I mean, it's not great, but it's more than enough to get me through, you know, spotting something, say, out in the wild or whatever. Uh, the focus is actually really good. You, you can zoom in and get like, you know, pin sharp focus on that. That that worked a lot better than I thought it would. But uh, being as how zoomed in it is and uh, the focal range is pretty narrow, uh, you are going to be hunting quite a bit uh, if you're trying to scan like a wide area and you're not sure where your prey or whatever it is you're, you're looking at is going to be. Uh, there's going to be quite a bit of, uh, you know, fiddling with the focus while you're trying to, uh, to focus in on a specific object. So yeah, like I said, uh, definitely makes sense. This is more for hunting. Not, you're not going to be wearing these strapped to your head, running around like an idiot while trying to do paintball or something like that. Uh, but if you're maybe like a spotter, um, you know, playing paintball, you could definitely use these and then uh, if you have like a radio or whatever, or if you're sitting next to your buddy who has like a sn sniper, paintball, rifle, whatever, uh, that this might actually be kind of helpful in that situation now that I think about it. So yeah, anyway, uh, hopefully you guys uh, found this video interesting. Uh, if you are interested in picking up a pair of these for whatever you have a use for them for, uh, you will find links down below. And if you have any specific questions, I'd be happy to try to answer them. And until next time, I'll see you guys. Bye. Okay, quick addendum. I saw screws and I had to remove them. So uh, this lens is actually pretty beefy. I didn't realize kind of how thick it is. Uh, that's mounted on the back here, and that's what you view it through. And the LCD itself, yeah, like I guess it's about two inches in there. And it's set pretty far back to give you that kind of focal range. And yeah, I'm going to see if I can get deeper into this and see the PCB and maybe if I can get towards the front. I see a couple of uh, rubber bungs to, uh, to extract to get to the screws. But yeah, uh, one thing is there's no rubber seal on here. So if you were to get this wet, pretty sure water could fairly easily make its way inside. So uh, this is not waterproof. Uh, I would definitely keep this in the case and try to keep it dry if you can. Uh, to prolong use of this but yeah let's see if we can get deeper inside okay so i was able to pull out these little rubber plugs and the screws underneath them and we can get a bit of a look inside the ir led is going to be in this cavity here the uh the sensor for the cmo sensor is on this side it has a little ribbon cable and another two wires there that's probably for the um the ir cut shutter that goes in and out i'm gonna probably yeah I, I think we can safely take this out hopefully without damaging anything and uh the main board is in there and uh yeah i'm not quite sure how this is uh screwed in or clipped in or whatever Okay, so unfortunately I pulled off, uh, where did it go? This little plate uh, that was covering the IR LED, and it looks like it's potted, well not potted, it's glued in there, uh, and it's somehow inserted from the front, so I don't think I could non-destructively get into there. There might actually be this ring, yeah, I think I can see it's kind of screwed, and then there's a bit of glue in there to hold it in. So yeah, it's just going to be an aluminum clad PCB, and the IR LED is in there. So yeah, I think I might be able to get in if I had a tool that could grab those notches and unscrew it, but it looks like there is some adhesive there as well. So it might end up breaking the plastic on that one. On here, we have the actual uh, CMOS sensor. This is the, it says NV sensor 2.0. Focus. There we go. That's really cool looking. <laughs> and yeah, uh, dated... Uh, Let's see, May 16th, uh, 2020. So, really cool. And the uh, actual shutter, you can see that reflective bit, that's the actual IR cut 
filter. And uh, when it sends a voltage to here, the, there'll be like a little coil that just retracts that out of the way so that it'll um, it'll work during the, the nighttime or the daytime, depending on whether it needs to turn on or off that filter. And you can see four more screws and you could pull that out. I'm just going to leave that in place. I don't want to get too much dust uh, in here because that will definitely affect the image. So I'm going to put this part back together. I don't want to risk uh, going in further and damaging the optics. Okay, progress. Uh, this is not screwed or glued together. It's just uh, kind of friction fitted, I guess. And you got to slide it away from the bit with the uh, SD card and whatnot because that's caught on the plastic there. And yeah, you can see here, it looks like uh, Celastic they used a little bit to hold these connectors in. I guess try to give them a little bit of vibration resistance. You see the LCD ribbon right in here? There's a piece of tape to, to hold that out of the way. Sorry about that. And we have the main board. This was the ribbon to the camera. This is the shutter ribbon. This is the IR LED ribbon. You can see there's a switching regulator in here. Pretty beefy uh, inductor. That's a pretty good hint that they're pushing. Probably like, I don't know, like up to maybe 3 watts, something like that, through that LED. Battery connector, other battery connector. Uh, we have some more power regulation going on here. It looks like uh, two rails. There's uh, one inductor, two inductor, and uh, even on this side as well, there's maybe some other regulation going on. There you go. See some power stuff going on there. Yeah, you can see all the buttons are these little surface mount uh, jobs. And it looks like there's actually room for like one inductor here and a regulator that's just not populated. Maybe they just didn't need it, they found. That's interesting. There is a four pin header here. That's interesting. And right in the center, there appears to be, let's see, uh, hopefully you guys can see that. Yeah, uh, it's a little eight pin job. Um, that seems kind of small. To, I mean, I guess, yeah, the processor has to be underneath. That's probably maybe like the firmware, the flash storage for the firmware. Let's see if I can just lift the skirt just a little bit. Take off, what, one or two screws, four screws, and uh, get underneath here. I want to see what the main processor is. Interestingly enough, there's a pad that's not populated, labeled BT1 battery. Is that like a battery backup for some reason? Huh. Yeah, I don't know. So let's just very carefully lift this. And yeah. I can see a RAM chip ESMT, what appears to be RAM, and uh, underneath is the actual processor. There you go. It's a SPCA. Bunch of numbers after it. <laughs> it's probably some sort of ARM processor or something like that. There is an unpopulated, looks like a, maybe a video output? That's... Yeah, that looks like a uh, micro HDMI port. So maybe at one point it was planned to have uh, like live HDMI out. There's uh, yeah, there's nowhere cut out on on the uh, the plate there for you know to let the port through. But that definitely looks like a micro HDMI footprint. And there's some uh, transistors, what appear to be transistors, like right next to it, whole host of them. Oh no, that's probably uh, like an H-bridge. Yeah, that's got to be an H-bridge to drive the shutter because uh, you drive it in one polarity to, to close in, probably another. It's probably bi-stable or something like that. So yeah, that's got to be an H-bridge right in there. Power regulation, here's the micro SD card slot, USB-C input. Uh, I could see some power-like stuff there. Uh, there... Yeah, this guy does have a real-time clock uh, because you can actually timestamp everything. So that's got to be a 32 kilohertz uh, crystal for the RTC probably built into the chip. There is the main crystal right in there for the chip. And more connectors on this side that aren't populated. Let's see if I can get a close-up. One says LS1. So I guess like loudspeaker? I don't know. The other one's MK1. Yeah, this guy is the LS1 and this is the MK1. Got a big old surface mount cap in the corner there. 
and maybe one of these chips that I, I thought is maybe this guy is for like a USB charging. I don't know. I, I did measure these two batteries to make sure that they weren't in parallel. They're definitely being charged in series. So it's going to need uh, probably a step up for that and, uh, and a, a dedicated chip to actually balance the cells in that case. So yeah, uh, forgot to mention, this is NV008 main version 1.2. This was actually this is later than the uh, the CMOS sensor board. This was made in January fifth of twenty twenty two, so fairly recent. Yeah, and this is probably thinking back on it is a debug interface for the main processor. So yeah. Anyway, uh, now that this is in a million pieces, I'm gonna have fun putting it all back together again and making sure it works. But yeah. Uh, this was just a really quick thing. I just, I really wanted to know what was inside of this and now I do.